Hey guys, it's The Vapist here, and this is a gear review. Today, I'm going to be reviewing the IPV2 by Pioneer4U. <clears throat> Here's your box mod. Um, it's a 50 watt device. Um, that is for you budget vapors out there. Uh, the price range comes in at about $110 to about $90. So that's pretty good um, for a 50 watt box mod. It's a game changer. Um, I think this is in direct competition with Segeli. Um, they're coming out with high wattage mods for uh, for good value. And uh, I'll, I'll run you through real quick on this device. Um, it is an aluminum box mod. Um, I think it feels good and solid on the hand. The buttons are a little uh, weird. Um, they are clicky, um, but they do work really well. I haven't had any buttons fail on me. Uh, no button rattle. Um, you just hold the plus or minus buttons to adjust your wattage. As you can see, it will fly up in watts. Check that out. All the way from 50 watts down. Hold that, hold the down button, it goes all the way down to 7 watts, okay? So it's got a huge wattage range, um, you've got your power button, plus button, minus button, up or down. Um, it's got a, it's actually got a touch button too. Right here, you just tap your finger on there and it'll fire. Um, this could be good or bad, um, you can turn it off. That's that's good. Um, I rarely use it, um, but if I do, I turn it off right afterwards. In order to turn the touch button on, you hold the power button and the up button at the same time. There it says touch on. Sorry, it's upside down. <laughs> I'll do the opposite and turn it off. Hit the minus button and the power button at the same time. And it says touch off. Okay? So... <clears throat> Whenever you turn the touch on, you've got to hit the power button, um, and the light has to, the screen has to light up for you to be able to hit that. And um, as long as the screen is on, that touch button is active. It's hot. So um, you have to wait 60 seconds for the screen to turn off for that touch button to stop being hot. So what I do is I turn it off and just leave it that way. So. Yeah, right now it's off, it's not firing. If I turn it on, touch on. It fires. Okay, so I've got it down at seven watts. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that touch button off. Um, I'll turn it up to about 15 watts here. which the Nautilus Mini, the BBC coils, can take up to about 20 watts. I wouldn't go above 20 watts. Um, even 20 watts has some dry hits, but it can handle power. Um, but I, I see 15 to 16 watts as the sweet spot. <clears throat> Works really well. Okay, so in order to lock the device, you just hold the plus and minus buttons it says lock. I know it's hard to see because my camera won't focus on that bright light. This screen gets bright. And hold it again. Well, if you try to fire it, it says please unlock. And then if you hold the plus and minus again, you'll see it says unlock and you can vape it again. Okay, so the pluses is the pluses is the plus and minuses of this device. Let's start with your negatives. The touch button, um, I just don't see it as necessary. If the, if, an, if the actual fire button was up here, that would be awesome. But uh, then you can do it like detonator style. Um, but I just hold it like this and use this finger. Um, that touch button, um, I'm glad you can turn it off, but I really wish it just wasn't there because if you happen to leave it on and it got wet or something, it will fire. Um, you don't want a 50 watt box mod auto firing in your pocket and I'm not sure if there's a safety cutoff um, I'm sure this chip has some sort of safety feature but you just don't want um, a mod 
auto firing in your pocket at 50 watts just not a good idea you're gonna burn up whatever head that's in here blah 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 so that's one negative the second negative um, the screws for the back panel that co closes over your battery are really small um, it's a little bit hard to unscrew them I haven't stripped any yet um, but they do come with five extra screws and a little screwdriver that's perfect size for that um, so that's a downside um, other than that I can't find any with this device especially for its price um, my back panel here sits as, as flush as it, as it possibly can on the back there um, it would be nicer if they use magnets let's talk about the pluses um, you can lock the thing it ranges from 7 to 50 watts um, if you like the touch button idea it's got a touch button on it um, another plus would be the inside of it all you see is the battery um, and it's all closed off you don't see wires or anything so it's just a little battery uh, you put your 18650 in here uh, I recommend 30 amp or higher um, get some VTC 4 or 5s in here and you're good to go I have a red EFS 1600 ma in here um, another plus would be the 510 connection is adjustable so there's a little pin a uh, little screw in there you can adjust up and down for uh, your the size of your atomizers although I must say everything I've tried to screw on here does not sit flush um, and this screws tightened all the way down so most of your things aren't going to sit flush on it I know there are devices out there from other people's videos that do sit flush on there but it's it's close it's just not flush um, you got your venting holes down there it's a plus uh, another plus is you can charge it with micro USB you don't have to take the battery out to charge it put it into a, a, a separate charger to charge your batteries all you got to do is plug it in and you'll see little red lights in these vent holes uh, that will turn on when it's charging and uh, you can see um, the little battery symbol on the display screen is pretty accurate and it shows voltage drop so when you're firing you'll see the battery level drop a little bit when it's getting down to like empty as you're firing you need to charge that thing up um, if it's going from like full to dropping down to like nothing after charging it you need to replace your battery because your battery is worn the hell out um, make sure you get the right batteries too battery safety guys there's vent holes um, this thing is a powerful device so make sure you're using the right equipment um, so I've got the uh, Nautilus Mini on here at about 15 watts I like to set it from 15 to 16 watts and uh, if fires immediately performs really well all I can say is for the price I highly recommend the IPV2 um, I haven't really touched my my mechanical mods um, because this regulated device puts out enough power for me to be satisfied and this tank satisfies me already it was doing it on my MVP but with this one it gives me a little more power to what this uh, these coils can handle and I, if you want a little bit more power um, for under a hundred bucks or around a hundred bucks this is this is, I highly recommend it. So yeah, the IPV2 by Pioneer for you. Um, yeah, so I I highly recommend this device. I'd give it you know. I'd give it a try because it's it's all I use now. It's what I pick up to go anywhere. Um, since it's a regulated device, these 18650s last a lot longer than they would on your mech mods if you're sub ohming and stuff. Um, so I highly recommend it. Go check them out. I got this one from uh, Elevate Vape, E L E V 8, the number, vape.com. And uh, they were selling it under 100 bucks. So, major thumbs up for this device. Um, that's all I'm going to say about it. Uh, you guys decide if you want it. I think you should try it out if you want a higher power box mod that's, that you don't want to drop you know, hundreds of dollars on. 
So two thumbs up. Thank you guys for watching and have a good day.